everybody, all the citizens and voters of Groton. And I'm using this because this is a New England version of uh, maracas. Uh, so I thought it was very appropriate. So my name is Gretchen Ciparini, and I'm a lifelong resident of Groton. And um, I'm doing this show, a series of shows. This may be the first of three shows, and we're probably going to have another show right after this show. So get comfortable in your chairs, because this is going to be a long haul. So I'm having this, these shows in response to the election of November 7th, because um, it's a, an extraordinarily important election. And, any, and I done these shows, I did these about 25 years ago, and times are not as severe with all the budgetary problems in Hartford than they are now. So I thought it's very important that uh, we do a show on getting to the root of these problems. Um, and I, I'm going to focus tonight on the, state, the state's dire problems. We're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to move on to how does that impact you and your pocketbook and Groton. And, I'm, and the main purpose for this is so that when you vote, that you can have information to ask your candidates to, to uh, know how to intelligently call I would like you to call them. And at the end of the show, we're going to have a listing of all the candidates and the incumbents uh, so with their contact information, their emails and their phone numbers, so that you can call them. And, uh, and I hope you pressure them. We need to shake them up. Um, and the problem is about property tax, and I want to explain. Uh, we're, we're, I'm going to get into the numbers and such. Um, and I, and I, you renters out there, you always say, well, I'm not impacted by property tax. Well, guess what? You are. I've been a landlord in my life, and when property taxes go up, that landlord's got to get more money. So he is going to tax you or raise your rent so he can pay higher taxes. So this involves you too, okay? Now, I am not going to support a particular candidate or party. I want to make that clear. But that does not exclude that I am not going to go after certain groups or individuals, okay? And this is the most important election of your life. If you care about your personal budget, if you care about your children's future, you should be listening to this program because what's going on in the state that's impacting our town is going to influence you probably more so than the last presidential election. And you'll learn why as we progress here. So it's critical on November 7th, I want to see all of you at the voting booth, okay? You have to vote. That's number one. And if you haven't uh, uh, registered yet, then please go and register right away. Okay. At the end of these, I'm going to say it again because I want you to pay attention. There's going to be a rolling screen. So be, go get a piece of paper and write down all the information. Have a paper and pen ready for the end of the show. In the next show, you'll see it again. So you'll see it a few more times. And also will be my email address which is shakeupgrotten at gmail.com. So you can email me if you have any questions. Then there's an email for the town's email address. You can email them and ask questions. And if worse comes to worse, you can go to the town clerk's office, Betsy McCausher, and you can ask her, okay, how to get information on how to get a hold of these candidates. Okay. Now, we're going to be talking about mostly those candidates or the, the, uh, the council, the town council, but RTM is running a full slate and the school board. So if you feel so inclined, you can call them too. They all have influence on the budget. Okay, now I want to ask you all about if, if you like this show, there's so much information that we can keep going with the show. I'm going to leave that up to you, the voters, if you want to see more, okay? I'm planning on doing three shows before the election. 
Uh, I don't have to continue. This is a lot of work. So if you think you need more information or if you have other ideas, then please email me and tell me. And I also could use help. We have crew here and it's a lot of work and I also need, could use help in gathering information. So if you want to participate, please email me, okay? So little do you know, I have a guest sitting next to me. Uh, the superintendent of Groton Schools, Dr. Michael Grenier. Happy Welcome, Dr. Grenier. I'm very happy to be here and talking about this important topic. We, as you know, we are in trouble with our budget, and maybe we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. But uh, I think having the having the citizens know the details uh, will be very important. Great. Okay. And you're taking a risk being here. You don't know what this show is going to be. So I That's really true. appreciate it. <laughs> and as a reward for that, I got a little gift for you and oh. I. Okay? Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're a good sport coming to this show. So here's our hats, yeah. say, Shake Up Groton. <laughs> All and, right. Uh, I'm going to put mine on temporarily yeah. here. Yeah. I'm not going to wear it. Blow it helps to see things. And I'm going to put them out front. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's. Yeah. Let's put them out front. All right. And I hope that cost me thirty-five dollars oh, today. Geez. So, so don't throw sure. it in the garbage no, if no, you don't no. like the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm going to start by. And the Dr. Grenier is going to have to sit and I know he he likes to get into the action, but he's going to have to sit and wait here because we got to work our way through the story from the state level to the local level, and then we'll end up at the school level, how it's impacting everything in between. And I'm going to give you a bit of history of everything. So you got to, you know, get comfortable in your seats because this is going to take a little bit of time. This is an unprecedented time in my 60 years in Groton. Um, and there's a lot of good things. I want to say that too. We got bad going on, that's for sure, but we have some good things. And the good things is that we, Groton's just had a change of a lot of staff. And I'm very happy that we have our new town manager, John Burt, who comes from Michigan. We have Keith Hedrick, who just got voted in about three, four months ago. Uh, he's the mayor of the city of Groton, and I believe he's been here a lot longer than, than John but he comes from North Carolina. Then we have John Reiner, who's fairly new, I believe two to three years. He's our, um, our well, he, he's involved with economic development, but he's our town planner. And he comes from Rhode Island. And Dr. Grenier, how long have you been here? This is my fourth year. Fourth year. And Dr. Grenier is from our next door town, Ledger. So I'm really excited to have all these new people here. Um, and, and we need structural change in Groton, and I think that's the only way it's going to get done. And historically, we've not had good communication between these areas. And we've been all meeting, and I think it's been very productive. We've got Keith Hedrick meeting with John Burt, the town manager. This is historic. There's traditionally has not been good relationships there. And Everybody is, we, there's meetings of which all groups, are, I think the superintendent should be involved in economic development. He's got to know, he spends 63% of our budget. He's got to know that it's hard to earn that money. So he's seeing what the rest of the town goes through to bring that money in. And that's beginning with this new town manager. And I'm super, super happy about that. And we're finally in Groton, we've got somebody who understands county government. John Burt is from, was a director of a county, I believe, in upstate Michigan. Mm -hmm. And he truly, and he's told me that he's combined services from other towns in that area. And so he knows how to do it. And that is, and we'll, that is super important. Okay. We need to streamline our re redundant government. So let me start by explaining what's going on at the state level. And I hope, I don't know, I do hope that things have changed by the time of the viewing of this show. Um, but I have a feeling they're, they're not going to have changed by the time this show is aired, and that would be unfortunate. So Malloy, our Governor Malloy, passed a budget 
uh, that would have hurt Groton inordinately. And uh, Superintendent, he can comment a little on that, I believe. Um, the first budget that Malloy came up with. Well, the first budget was actually a budget that was uh, submitted uh, in, in mid-February of last year. Right. And we were shocked to see that the, at least the education portion, uh, education cost sharing grant, the, the big state aid that comes, right. Uh, would have been reduced by $9 million. Uh, that was in February, so that the town adjusted its budget accordingly uh, through, through the spring. Um, and then uh, most recently, however, uh, when the, when the, the state uh, legislature failed to pass a budget, he issued an executive order which has actually been implemented, right. uh, unfortunately, this week, uh, right. starting uh, October 1st. And in uh, and, and Groton actually, instead of getting its regular $25 million, uh, a portion of the $25 million state aid to education, uh, is only getting a portion of 7.25. So in other, in other words, we've actually lost, uh, we've, we've, we've lost 17 and a half overall. Right. So the... So the state, uh, the state budget, and 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 the impasse that they're having up there is having a huge impact on us. Right, right. Now, I don't want to get into the details because it's very involved. But one of our issues is that we are privileged to have the submarine base here, and that's caused lots of issues. The the governor in that first budget held that against us and that budget is gone now so I'm not going to get involved with that but we have 2200 housing units in a in an entity called Belfort Beatty and we're going to get into how that is still plaguing us um boy you took the words uh right out of my mouth I don't know you, you got me off kilter here but <laughs> st state broke is broke our state state of Connecticut is broke Okay, I'm sure you've read the news to the tune of three and a half billion dollars. Okay, they did not fund the teachers' pension obligation. That's that's the root of the big problem, um, and thus they have to borrow money. And if any of you have mortgages, you know this compounds. So this is going to continue to get worse year year after year more and more. And for some reason, Governor Malloy has, has been gunning Groton. And I'll get into some of the reasons why, because he knows we have structural problems here and he's taking advantage. He knows that there's things in Groton that could be fixed. So we'll get into that. And I'm going to keep reminding you along the way, these are the questions you should be asking these candidates for town council and your RTM candidates and your school board candidates. Uh, are they going to pay attention to this? Okay. So we went through. So I'm going to quickly go through the the state ruminate remunerates us normally 25 million. In the in this year, um, they're only going to do 20 million. You correct me if if I'm wrong. Which required in part our council try to compensate for that. So they raised our taxes by 8.7 percent. You just paid that in July. Okay. And they reduce the budget, which means there's less money to spend, right, right. Dr. Grenier? Yep. By $5 million, okay? And that was quite a process. They chose five. They could have chosen among different numbers. Um, so now that original budget is gone. The, the, the governor is not doing it. And, and now we're on this autopilot thing with the uh, governor that gives that its executive orders, and he's only going to give us seven and a half million now. That's right. Okay, so this town budgeted twenty million minus the seven and a half million means we have a shortfall right now, as this show is being filmed, and maybe that will ch change next week, of twelve point five million dollars. Okay, so this is dire situation because we can't make this money out of nowhere we can't towns and states can't make money like the federal government so we can't parentally be in debt so so if the town and the school department don't cut their budget you the citizens and businesses of Groton will be responsible for paying that 12.5 million dollars so you will get if nothing's done you will get another bill in the mail that will compensate now that's equal 
the, to 12 to 11 percent. You just got an 8.7 percent increase. That amount will be 11 percent on top of that. Terrible. So let's go a little retrace through the numbers here. So we had a four. Um, we had a five million dollar cut, and that's equal to four percent of the budget. Then we got our taxes increased by 8.7 percent. Then if we have to pay this 12 and a half, uh, 12 and a half million, that's equal to 11%. That would be a total increase in this year of 23%. Okay. Now some of that was cut from the budget. This is serious. Voting voters out there, this is really serious. I don't know about you, but I personally cannot survive with those kind of increases. And I don't think most people can. We are going to see Groton empty out. Okay, so this is why you have to vote. You know, in the last election, with, where Trump ran, ran, didn't, when he won, it didn't influence your taxes yet. Hopefully, he's going to lower them, but this will directly influence your taxes. Property tax is one of the most harmful taxes all because if you make zero money and you still own a home, you still have to pay them. Whereas income tax, federal level and state income tax, goes down if you don't make any, and if you don't. Make anything, you don't pay any tax. So this is a very, very impacting tax. Now, I'm a business lady, okay? And if Groton thought like a business, and I think Dr. Grenier will agree with me on this one. If I am a business and I have a supplier that's hurting me, I get away from that supplier. If I have a, a company that's hurting me in some other way that I'm dealing with, I get away from them. Well, that's what we have to do in Groton, is get away from the state of Connecticut. We had a town manager, Mark Ofrinker, was a town, he was our manager for 14 years, uh, or 13 years, I believe, and he was a town planner before that. Um, he allegedly made, when he retired, $145,752 a year. And now in retirement, you and I, taxpayers, are paying him $96,660. He didn't do anything in these 13 years to wean us from the state. In fact, I used to hear Marx say that he got this grant for that. that. Those grants are your money, too. He was notorious for going to the state of Connecticut and getting money from the state. That was his, his passion. Matter of fact, I have, he, he was a king of state grants, okay? He was good at two things, in my opinion. He was good at keeping his job and all the politics that went along with that. And he was great at applying for the state funding. So we got ourselves in a pickle because of our dependence on the state and not getting away from the state. And I've been telling uh, uh, Dr. Grenier here that we got to wean, wean ourselves off the state. And I hope there's school board members here because a big part of this is, is school expense, educational expense. And wouldn't it be nice if we earned enough money in Groton and we didn't have to depend on, on these people up there in Hartford who can't seem to get their their act together, wouldn't that be wonderful? I think Dr. Grenier would yep. agree with that. Certainly okay? would. And the state is going to be broke for a very long time, probably till the day I die. Okay? This is not going to go away. Again, they cannot print money. So we need to shake up Groton more than ever, okay? Because we need to get on the ball to get independent from that milk cow called the state of Connecticut and get on our own. Okay, at this point, I gotta calm down because I get excited on this subject. <laughs> I'm Italian. I want to thank Joyce Medling from the Groton Department of Education. Thank you, Dr. Grenier, for letting us help us. And we're gonna be showing a bunch of graphs tonight. And uh, I want to bring the first one up, Frank. My other little Italian in there. <laughs> okay. This is, and I want to explain the mill rate. A lot of people don't understand mill rate because it is complicated. Towns have this nutty way of, instead of just telling you how much money you owe, they have this number. And it allows you to compare from town to town. That, that's what it does. Mark Goldfinger would argue with that, but I think it's a way to put everything at a standard level so you can 
compare town what the taxes are from town to town. Well, when you look at this graph, you can see it's nothing but up. We had a little bit of repeat pre back there in 2012, but it's been nothing but upward trending. And so let me explain what it is. That is how many dollars per thousand dollars of assessment. They come to your house every four years, I believe, and they assess its value. And then they take that number in those four, every year in those four years, and they multiply. So if your house is worth $100,000, there's $100,000 in that 100,000. So they take that number. So let's look at 2016. It's 23.63. So you multiply that times 100, and it's $2,363. That would be your tax if your house was valued at $100,000 in 2016. So, and if nobody understands it after that, then, then email me and I'll re-explain it to you, okay? The thing you got to learn from this chart, if the mill rate goes up, your taxes are going up. It's as simple as that, okay? So, what are the ramifications to taxes going up, the mill rate going up? What does it do to a town? It does a lot of uh, bad things. Businesses leave. They can't survive. They can't make uh, a profit. Businesses have to make a profit or they, they don't stay. So what does that do? Now, if you look at the, what's, and I'm going to all explain, the grand list is all those assessments of everybody's homes and businesses, and it becomes a big pie chart. And that pie chart represents the total grand list. They call that big number the grand list of, of, of a town, okay? And so the your mill rate, your percentage of the little sliver you pay of your house or your business is what you pay to pay down that mill rate. I mean, that grand list, I'm sorry. Um, so if there's businesses are leaving, they take up less of the pie chart. They're paying less. So that means if the pie chart doesn't get any smaller, guess what? You, the citizen, you're paying the difference, okay? So as businesses skedaddle out of Groton, guess who's going to have to make up for it? You, the citizens. And that is exactly what is going on in Groton right now. So we not, and this is happening in the state too. People are leaving the state. So on their income tax, there's not, they're, they're losing revenue. Well, this is happening in the local level too. When this happens, urban blight sets in. You have buildings that are abandoned, houses that are abandoned, okay? The spiral begins, okay? You have an increase in crime then. Now there's places to hide and, 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 and the, you know, police can't police everything. When there's people around, you don't need to have police going everywhere. We don't have enough police to cover all the empty buildings, okay? Then you have reductions in services such as library, senior center, okay? We all love that stuff, right? Then school, school classes, school everything, uh, after class stuff, all of that reduces because that takes staff, costs money, okay? And that's just, that's the beginning, okay? So as the mill rate goes up, taxes go up, your, the services generally go down. This happened in Detroit. Services go down because they're in. Bec and that puts more pressure on you, the residents. You're not as mobile as some businesses just close. You're not as mobile. You may have family here and stuff. You can't just leave. So it, it really raises havoc in your life, okay, in, in because your costs are going to go up. So let's bring the graph two up. Now, I don't want you to get confused on this graph because um, it's a little deceiving. Just because it shows on the left side there, fiscal year 2011 and 12, and that it went down, does, that, does not mean that your taxes went down on those years. It just means that your taxes didn't go up as much as the year before, okay? So don't, don't get confused here. The scary part about this graph is the second part, from 2013 till 2016. It's like a, a, a ski slope, right? It's, 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 it's a rocket ship taking off here, okay? And I'd like to know how many of you watching this show, voters of Groton, had increases in your pay of 4%, 3.72%, and 8.7%, which could skyrocket, as I told you, more than, much more than double of that, okay? So 
this this is comparing the town's increase and what they're going to increase can already have in this chart increased cost to you how that compares to what you earn in your income and i'm sure none of you have had since 2013 increases in your household income that equal these in, these increases okay and on top of it all these numbers compound okay it's like when you get a, a mortgage from the bank they charge you an interest rate and it's 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 it, 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 it goes on the thing last year, and that goes on the thing the year before. So this is a compound. It's much worse. Okay? All right. Okay. So if this newly elected council for the November 7th election is going to hit you again to pay for their $12.5 million shortfall, then an 8.74% increase that you had in July is going to seem like nothing. It's going to go much higher. So I would like you, as the voters, to question these folks running. I don't know their positions. I haven't talked to one of them. And ask them, how are they going to deal with this? OK, well, I'm going to tell you some ways to deal with it, because I've been around a long time, OK? How does Groton increase its revenue stream and get off the state aid, OK? and come totally independent from the state. Obviously, you cut costs, OK? So there's many ways to do this. One is hiring freeze. I believe we have that in place now. The, the new town manager has done that. Another way is a rage freeze, OK? Well, just the other day, they voted to increase the on-union by 2.5% and the union by 2%. This should be fixed. This sh and that goes up. That's been going up. If you do the research, it's gone up every year. So it's compounded, OK? There is no wage freeze. And the council, this council that's in now just did that. Another way to cut costs is, and I don't know the name, Social Services Department, OK? We have a regional Social Services Department. Um, of southeastern Connecticut. And every town but Groton is not, does not participate. We don't, every other town participates in it. And I've talked to other towns, Stonington, and I've been told that when somebody comes in who needs those services, they say, go down to Groton. They'll take care of you. They have a free store. They have everything there for you. They'll give it to you for free. They have a whole department. So the neighboring towns are pushing off people who have, need these services off to Groton. And, and I've even heard that people call here and inquire if we have these services, because they said they'll move to Groton if they, we have, because other towns don't have it like Groton does, OK? So another big way, and I've talked to John Burt about this, and I think he's going to look into it. OK, source subject. Number two, on, on increasing revenue. And this one bugs Governor Malloy a lot. We have tons of redundant services in Groton. We have three police departments. We have two planning departments. We have two town clerks. We have two town halls. We have two public works. And I don't know about you, but when I have a visitor come to Groton and I try to explain all this to them, they're totally confused. So it, 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 it makes it very hard to market Groton because nobody understands it. Um, oh, we have 10 fire districts, too, each with their own chief, OK? I tell you, I, I'm going to make a bet. I haven't asked John Burt, the town manager, where he comes from. I bet his county, where he was the county manager of, is as big as Rhode Island. And I bet you they had probably one fire chief, OK? So. But it's interesting, Dr. Grenier, we manage with one school department. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> how do you do it? Maybe we should have you go to all these other departments and figure out how to put it all together, because you figured out a way, OK? I've even suggested to John Burt that we um, go to a lo uh, surrounding towns and it, talk to them about sharing services. And that's an idea for you, Dr. Grenier. Um, and I've even brought up to the point that 
and this is extreme, that we combine towns, okay, and form one new town. In fact, some towns up north are, are considering this with this budget crunch. But minimally, we should be combining services. All right, the next area to gain revenue is economic development, something dear to my heart, okay? And that's going to be the subject of my third show. When I was young in Groton, that was a long time ago, I could go down Long Hill Road and it was bumper to bumper tra traffic. There were tons of privately owned wonderful restaurants. I have excellent memories in Groton uh, of, of, there was a lot to do. So, um, we have wonderful opportunity now. If you think about it, back then, EB had 24,000 employees. Well, guess what? We're probably going to be back up to, we hope, 18,000 employees. Uh, EB's hiring 10,000. That's the really good news about our area. But the problem is, 80% of those people leave every day and don't spend their money here, okay? Because there's nothing to do here. So that's, that's where economic development comes in. So I'm going to give you an analogy that I give to people. People who know me know this analogy. I don't know if Dr. Grenier does. A town government is like a three-legged stool, okay? Each leg, one leg's business, one leg's the residence, and the other leg is the resident, residence of the town. And if one of those legs is too long or short, the stool starts tipping and you can't sit it on it anymore. So we want a level stool. We want all those legs equal size, okay? Well, our business leg is extremely short. Our resident leg is getting shorter because people are leaving because they can't afford it here. And our government leg hasn't reduced anywhere the amount that those other two things have. So we're getting to the tipping point where people are sitting on the stool can't sit on the stool. And in that, so, so economic development, I'm going to do a whole show on economic development. So we will be getting back really important area. Okay. Now I'm going to get to the subject of the show, which are loopholes within Groton by several private entities to not pay their fair share of taxes. Okay. So... That is going to be the subject of this show. Now, I'm going to say No Ink School is an issue. The property that was uh, not utilized to earn revenue for Groton, the Odd Fellows Home, and the former Navy housing, it's called Belfort Beatty. And that's what we're going to be talking about because it's a big one. And this situation with Belfort Beatty has to move to the top of the agenda with the new town council. It is imperative. And it's been, uh, Mark Ofing, our former town mayor, manager, shoved it under the table, and um, every council did. It started in 2004, so that's, uh, what, that's 13 years, or that's, that's six councils ago, because they're in for two years. That, and they've all essentially have ignored it, okay. Okay, before going into the history of how this happened, I want to go into the, give you uh, the impact it's having upon the, tax and the taxpayers. Okay, Balfour Beatty is the operating company of the former Navy housing and pays absolutely zero, zero, zero taxes, okay? Well, they occupy most of the northern part of our town, okay? But we, Groton, are providing services to them, okay? And we're going to show you a chart where we're going to show all the, these. We've been doing this craziness since 2004, okay? And I want to bring up the chart for, okay? Now, these are the services that we presently provide and the cost. This is a lot of work to put this all together. So we provide full police services, we provide Groton ambulance services, we provide emergency communications to call the police, call the ambulance, and we provide education. And you can see this is a lot of money. In 2016, it cost you, the taxpayer, 7.5, oh, a little over $7.5 million. That's out of your pocket. Okay, That is not out of Belfort Beatty's pocket. 
Okay? And I'm gonna, this is shocking. That number, when you divide it by the population of Groton, costs every man, woman, and child $180 a year. Okay? So if you're a family of five, you're a mother and father and three kids, you're paying almost $1,000 a year just to support this entity. And guess what? You didn't know that. There's no sign when you come into Groton that says, hey, stop here and pay a toll of $180 for everybody in the car who's moving here. There isn't. But you're paying it, and you don't even realize it. And this shortfall, $7.5 million in 2016, is three quarters of the $12.5 million that we're not getting from the state. So guess what? If we got Belfort Beatty to pay its fair share, and you're going to learn more about Belfort Beatty, and you're not going to like it, um, we wouldn't be sweating this out like we are right now. This is stress. And every one of us should be really in stress. I know, I don't know about you, but I can't think of, sleep at night thinking about this because it scares the bejesus out of me. Okay? Now, assume for those 13 years that, and you've got to ignore the hand waving. I'm Italian, okay? All right. It's all part of it. So, for those 13 years, you saw on the chart that it was $7.5 million. I'll assume conservatively that it was $4 million a year that we've been contributing. Do you know when you multiply that times 13 years, that comes to $52 million? If that's all you learn from this show is the impact of that, $52 million that you Groton taxpayers have paid out of your hard-earned money to pay for some private company, public private company, and I'll talk more about that, so they can make more money. Okay? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get it in right now. It's not just Bell for Beatty. There is now, Solar City has done some kind of contract. We can't get our hands on it because it's not in the land records. They are putting... They found another loophole, another company. They're putting solar farms there. And they're not paying a dime of taxes on all that stuff out there, the solar collectors either. Now, if you put solar collectors in your house, on your backyard, or on your roof, you would be paying personal t property tax. But these companies aren't paying a dime, okay? And I'm going to talk about, this is a multi-edged sword, okay? I talked about economic development. Part of economic development, when I get to the last show, is going to be about how we have a shortage of housing. Housing for young professionals, people getting uh, in blue collar, skilled blue collar that's coming to EB. We have a shortage, okay? Well, and you've got to understand a little economics here. When rents are established by Belfort, remember, 2,200 units are in there, okay? And they established probably the bottom of the rents. So everything builds from there. So to attract investors to go out and to build more housing, they have to pay taxes on that housing they build. Remember that. So they can't compete against Balfour Beatty. So this is not only shorting us on our budget and shorting you as an individual taxpayer, it's shorting our, our, our future because we're going to have a hard time. We are having a hard time attracting investors to compete against that because they can't because that's so big. Belfort Beatty is, is huge. Okay? So let's get into the history now of how we got here. Okay. On or about November 1st, 2004, the Navy and GMH Housing, that's another company I mentioned here, that GMH was before Belfort Beatty, entered a ground lease and a conveyance of facilities agreement, agreement, and the ground lease was for 50 years. This means that the Navy maintains ownership of the land and GMH took ownership of the buildings. That's what I think it means, okay? Then GMH, this is complicated. GMH and um, the Navy formed a partnership, and they called it Northeast Housing LLC, and they did... This contract, which we have, we've got the contract, and they did it. If you look at the contract, it's a boilerplate contract, and they did it with many towns throughout the whole country, okay? And they're listed in that contract because they use the same contract for every town, okay? So, and the government is a non-managing partner, whereas 
Northeast Housing is the managing part, okay? Then they, Northeast Housing went to the public markets to raise $517 uh, million, a half a billion dollars, to tear down or build the former Navy housing. And we have that documentation, okay? And there was a conveyance. It's at the, it's at the town clerk's office that shows, and let's bring it up. We have it here. Okay, here's the conveyance from the town clerk's office. All right, and you can see the amounts of the conveyance. Now, the town clerk could work these numbers backwards. You, whenever you sell something, you have to pay the town a conveyance tax, and you have to pay the state government ta conveyance tax. So we looked at this, and we came up that there was $7 million approximately, a little bit over, uh, exchange. And that amount was for the purchase of the, it was very run down back then, Navy House, the purchase of the buildings and the infrastructure that was on the Na former Navy housing properties. So this is simple. A conveyance tax was paid, which means it's privatized. I don't see where this is hard. I don't see where Mark Ofringer had a problem with this or any town council along the way. This is a private situation now, okay? And on top of that, but I think it came years later. On top of that, citizen, private citizens started moving in. So that's another reason that it's privatized, okay? And I think at the beginning there were no civilians there. I don't think, the intent was not to have civilians, but, but I think they found they couldn't keep it full, so they had to start renting to civilians. So if, if this... What's up there, this conveyance doesn't do it. The fact that there's civilians in there should make this a private venture, okay? On and about uh, April 30th, 2008, GMH sold out to a company named Belfer Beatty. Now, let me tell you about them. They're a British engineering construction investment company on the London Stock Exchange. They're not even an American company, okay? So you... Groton residents and taxpayers are paying so that a company with shareholders all around the world so that they can make more money, okay? And who knows what deal Solar City has with Bell for a BD. There may be a deal there. So they're getting paid from Solar City too, and we're not getting a dime. And I guarantee you, Bell for a BD and previously GMH are paying federal income tax. I guarantee you of that. But us poor folks in Groton? No, we get nothing. Okay. I want to get to the next thing that is mind-boggling to me. I told you that contract that was done between the government and to form this second LLC, that there were many different towns listed. So I took the motive to go and look Call some of those towns, okay? And I called five of them, five, okay? The first one is Brunswick, Maine, okay? They have 463 units off base and 98 units on base. From a letter, I'm going to read from a letter that was sent to me from the kind people at Brunswick. I told Brunswick about our situation. They couldn't believe it, couldn't believe it. And I'm get, this is a quote from the, what was sent to me. Town attorneys conclude that there is no exclusive federal jurisdiction over the land area associated with the base property since in 1989 the Maine legislature granted express concurrent jurisdiction over the base and property and subject to property tax under Maine law. The statute grants exemption only to the property of the United States and it was no longer of the United States since the buildings were transferred in fee and the land transferred by long-term lease. What's wrong with... Brunswick, Maine's got their act together. What's wrong with Groton? Okay? They decided they're going to, to tax them. Okay? Exactly the same documents were done for Groton. Identical. Okay? We signed... We had, we, we, our name was on these same documents. But Brunswick figured it out. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, they didn't tax them. They did, what's, they did a, an agreement. They sat down with them, forced them to the negotiating table, and they negotiated a payment, okay? 
Okay, on 11-1-2004, um, GMH Military Housing in the, in the Navy entered to under the name of Northeast Housing uh, with a 50-year lease. Okay, um, and then on 11-2004, the town of Brunswick for, for, for services entered into an agreement, the agreement I just referred to. Okay, now I want to go to the next town, which is, I want to go to the next letter. Oh, we have that, okay. Um, okay, um, let me go figure out here. Um, okay, I want to read the um, Kittery, Maine. Okay, I think we've got the wrong thing up here. I'm sorry. Yes, right. There you go. Um, I'm going to read. This is an agreement that's in front of you that was between Kittery, Maine is the other main town. Okay, and they have 200 units off base. And I'm going to read this agreement that is between the Navy and... Um, Navy and um, GMH, who form Northeast Housing with the town of Kittery, Maine. Okay, and it says, whereas the Navy will lease certain land pursuant to a 50-year ground lease and transfer title certain housing improvements and auxiliary facilities currently existing at or otherwise servicing the base to an intermediate entity, that's Northeast Housing, that will immediately transfer the ground lease and improvements to Northeast Housing. That's what I just said. And thereafter, Northeast Town will contract, will contract for all necessary services. Okay, that's when they did the billing, including architectural engineering and construction services, obtained pi pri financing from a private lender, and supervised renovation or demolition of existing housing construction of new housing and ancillary facilities in accordance with specifications approved by the Navy. Then it goes on to say that it's primarily Back then, I told you, it was probably for the use of military family housing units for military personnel. Okay, then it goes on to say, whereas in exchange for a fee, Northeast Housing desires to contract with a municipality, okay, in this case that is the town of Kittery, Maine, for certain services from the municipality that shall include police, fire, and miscellaneous services as more particularly set forth in Exhibit B, which is in the back. They say in their contract that they are with Kittery, Maine, that they're going to pay them. Where's our contract? Where's Groton's contract? Okay? So, let's move on to the next town. Newport, Rhode Island. Close. We all know Newport. We all love to go to Newport. They were a lot smarter than this. They have a written agreement. Very similar to the parts that I... Matter of fact, all these towns that I'm telling you all have the same agreement. It's very strange. Almost identical. So obviously, and I spoke with them, they were all talking to each other. I asked them, was Groton, Connecticut a part of these conversations? They said no. But Mark Ofinger had a copy of these agreements and knew all these towns were doing this, were, existed. Why didn't he pick the phone up and call them and become a participant with them? Okay, that's the question, okay? Middle Tolden, Rhode Island. Again, another contract. I have that contract. Portsmouth, the, Portsmouth, Rhode Island was the smartest of all. They put them on the ground list, meaning they paid the mill rate that you and I pay in Portsmouth, and they just put them on. They didn't get sued. People think, oh, in Groton, we're going to get sued. We're going to lose rack. We're going to lose this and that. Nothing happened. Matter of fact, nothing happened in any of these towns to any of the Navy as a result of these contracts. Nothing. Okay, let's bring the next item up. The letter from John Phillip to GMH. Okay. Here's a letter. I'm going to read to you parts of it. This is a letter from, John Phillips was a former tax assessor for Grot. Okay, Mark Ofinger was the town manager of the town, time. And this is a letter from, the, from him to GMH, okay? 
And it says, my response to the request is based on the representation of facts and law made to me and other Groton officials by the representatives of Northeast over the past several months, including that the fee title to the land remain in the Navy. The Navy will lease the land to GMH and will convey title of certain housing and facility facilities to GMH, and thereafter, GMH will transfer for its leasehold interest and title in the housing and ancillary facilities to Northeast. Sounds a lot like that, what I just read from the other two towns, five towns actually. And, and, and the conveyance of interest in the housing units and facility will be for the duration of the project. Okay? Then, later he goes on, he says, I, he says, I therefore, I do not plan to add sub properties to the town's grand list. But this is the interest part. I have, however, only had minimal opportunity to review portions of draft documents pertaining to the relationship between GMH and the Navy and the operation of the project. If upon a thorough review of the final ex executed documents pertaining to the creation and operation of the privatization project and any other relevant documents, documents or based on a review of information t obtained from any other source, I learned that the information upon which I base the opinion expressed in this letter is incorrect in a material way, or if I discover that my understanding of the law is incorrect, or if the project and or law changes in any way, that, that would make the project taxable. If, or if it, for any reason I determine that is in the exercise of my duties as assessor of the town of ground that the property and our buildings compromise the privatization project are subject to real property taxation by the town of ground, I will perform my duty to add them to the town's grand list. That's from our own assessor. He wasn't sure. This is a letter. I I'm going to tell you what this letter is all about. It's all about telling the council and the town manager uh, I'm really not in agreement with this, and it needs a lot more looking into, so I'm, I'm not going to tax it, but I really don't know. Wonderful. $52 million. Remember that number of your money, okay? And this is the attention it got, okay? All right. Now. Now. Um, Okay, we have next, um, okay, uh, from, from, we have a letter, another letter here, um, from the captain of the base to Mick O'Byrne. Frank, can we get that letter? Okay. This letter is, says it all. <laughs> this is like a little gold mine, this letter, okay? This is dated September. Uh, June 20th, 2003. And it's from the mayor at the time was Mick O'Byrne. And it's from Captain James Rotte. I don't know if I'm saying his not name right, Jr. And I believe he was the CO down at the base at the time. And it says to Mr. Mayor O'Byrne, under a PB, PPV agreement, the Navy's goal is to create a win-win situation for military members in the local community. Sounds good, huh? The Navy and the private contractor act as partners in a limited liability corporation to manage our military family housing. Title to the Navy homes transfers to the private company, but the Navy retains ownership of the land. The key there is private company. You got that? Even the Navy's calling them a private company. Therefore, our present arrangement of public school impact aid will not change. Okay, we're going to talk about that with Dr. Grenier. However, the provision of utilities, fire, police, trash, and all other service will have to be negotiated. Got it? It's what the other five towns did. Between the Navy and the local community and the private company. Again, private, word private. In there again. Services presently provided by the Navy will be shifted to the private sector whenever possible. You should expect to see negotiations of this nature begin in early 2004. There you go. It says it all. Okay? Again, where was Mark Ofinger? Where was, and Mick O'Burn. Hey, Mick, if you're hearing this, you've got my vote, but I know you're not running. Okay? You and I had our tussles at one time, but you... From what I've looked through, but I haven't looked through everything yet, you were the only guy, and you're a former Navy captain, who really t 
targeted this issue and you were ignored, okay? You were, you were, nobody paid attention to you, especially the rest of your counselors in, in Mark Ofinger, okay? So you kept asking questions. All right, um, this is a nice time to break. Um, I think um, we, uh, I think it's a really good time Break. I can talk a little more about the five towns. The five towns had their act together, didn't they? Groton did not have their act together. Even one of them, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, even got them put on the, on the tax records, on the, on the grand list. They had no problems doing this. No problem with BRAC, and we're going to talk about that next, okay? And even GMH, who actually sent Brunswick, Maine, a letter asking about, and we'll talk about that coming up here like in the next show, they even sent a letter to GMH to the town of Brain, Brunswick and asked them how they wanted to be compensated. Okay, we're going to go now and show you um, the names of all the people running and we're going to uh, have another show, um, and, and it's just a continuation of this show, and you'll, we'll be talking to Dr. Grenier. And hang on, you only got a part of the story. We're not all done, okay? Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to my new, my Connecticut maracas here. Shake it up, Groton. Gretchen Ciparini here, and we're going to continue the show, um, explaining how we have to shake up Groton on November 7th in the next election. Um, as I explained in the last show, times are very tough uh, for, for Groton and most of Connecticut, and we got a lot of things we got to fix. Um, again, I'm not going to support any candidates in the show or parties. Um, I'm here to educate you so you can call. I, at the end of the show, there will be a scrolling of all the candidates running for the town council, but we're also having RTM and school board uh, folks running for office too. If you, my email address, uh, wakeupgrotten at gmail.com is also listed. Please email me if you have any questions. You also can, there's an email there for the town. I believe it goes to the clerk's office. You can email her if you have any questions. Um, this is the most important election of your life. I can guarantee you that. More important than the last election for president because property tax is the most damaging tax there is. We know that because if you earn no income, you still owe it. Um, Please vote on November 7th. If you're not registered, get it in there and, and get registered. Um, I'm going to have another show. I may have one between, but November 1st at 7 o'clock. 
That will be a show that I probably will open the phones up so you can call in. Please be nice to me. Remember, I'm a volunteer, so this is all volunteer time. I need help with this show. If anybody wants to email me to help uh, um, do so, I need help with the cameras, with everything, with getting data together. So that would be great. The next show in November uh, will be on the, the whole theme of these shows is how is Groton to generate revenues for Groton so that we are no longer dependent on that milk cow called the state of Connecticut. So we want to get free of them so we don't go through the stress every time the state of Connecticut does a budget. So um, we went, I went through in the first show all the, the ways to go about that. And we're talking about Belfort Beatty and how they've taken advantage of you citizens in getting services that you're paying for and they're not. Um, so I want to bring up, um, oh, and I have Dr. Um, Grenier here um, as my guest. And uh, I'd like to say thank you for coming, Dr. Grenier. You're welcome. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot more in this show to Dr. Grenier than on the first show. Um, I want to bring up um, the GMH letter. Um, can we get that up, Frank? Okay, this letter is from the GMH, which was the first company that that privatized the Navy housing everywhere. That was pre-Belfort Beatty. And it's from GMH to Mr. Goresh, who is the town manager of Brunswick, Maine. Okay, and I want to put your attention to that one and two there. And it says, um, in preparation for this closing, the closing for them to privatize this, that's what they're talking about, to form the Northeast Housing LLC, we need to know if the town of, Be of Brunswick, Maine, intends to impose real estate taxes on this project. My God, that's number one there. Or provide police, fire, and EMS service on a fee-for-service basis and negotiate a fair compensation with the town for providing these services. We have reached mutual agreement under similar negotiations with the town of Kittery, okay? It is our preference to operate under scenario number two, which is they want to negotiate a deal. We didn't, I don't think we got a letter like this. I don't think uh, Groton saw a letter like this. At least I haven't found it yet. This is where I need help. Maybe it's there. And I also would like to comment that all this stuff I'm getting came from Mark Ofinger's office. This is all Within his possession, he had viewing of all this stuff. He had knowledge of all this stuff. And why didn't he talk about it? And I, I'm going to say the councils that we had, the six councils, maybe some of them were the same people on each council. I think they were not, he didn't tell them. I don't think they knew. I, met, I mentioned Mick O'Byrne, he knew, but they didn't really, it didn't really get into their, their thinking that much. I mean, I'm doing more research on that, but that's Mark Ofringer's job to bring issues to, to his council. And none of them did anything, including the last town council that's in, in, uh, it's in power now. Okay, so um, let's move on. So I went through the five towns that all have agreements or put them on the land records. Um, what did Groton do? We did do some things. And I'm going to show you what we did. We, I have it here. I'm going to get up. I'm going to put my mic back on. We have here five notebooks. Five notebooks. That. Oh that, look at these things. What, they're three, five, four, I'm sorry, four three-ring notebooks, okay? God, they're almost as tall as me, okay? This is what your tax dollars does in Groton. You know, we have a whole, an entire closet full of reports like this. If you talk to the town clerk down the basement of the town hall, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of studies done 
to study things that we never implement. We never did. Mark Oving was the king of studies. He loves studies. King of getting state funds and king of doing this stuff, spending your dollars to do nothing. So what is this? This is from the town attorney, Sussman Shapiro, the same letter is in front of every one of them. And this is them looking at the issue of can we tax GMH, which later became Balfour Beatty. This is everything. Now, I can guarantee you, Kittery, Maine, Brunswick, Maine, Newport, Rhode Island, I guarantee you they don't have this pile. They just went ahead and did it. They didn't do this whole study, okay? And I'm going to talk to you. Oh, and I have the billing here. Let's get this down. I don't want to, and it's so tall, it's, you don't see me. Okay, this is the billing for all of that. And I'm going to read some of the numbers off to you. I didn't add it up. $769.50, $1,296, um, $337.50, $3,469. It goes on and on and on, $121, $58, $3,030. $1,986, $2,320, okay? I guarantee you there's tens of thousands of dollars here in your taxpayers' dollars to, to do that, which did absolutely zero for Groton. Nothing. We got nothing out of it. But these other towns went and just went ahead without their town attorneys and put them on the land records or negotiated a contract. And all this is, is a town attorney generating fees. Another problem in Groton is we never go to bid for town attorney. That's a whole nother show, okay? And we don't go to bid. We give it to the same for I don't know how many years they've been the town attorney. And it all is to create fees that you pay, okay? The town attorney still is Eileen Dugan, or Doug, I don't know if our, do you know how her name is pronounced? Okay, Dugan of Sussman. Um, I'm going to tell you what she is. Tony Dugan is an employment lawyer. That's her specialty. I have an MBA in commercial real estate. I've been in commercial real estate all my life. Okay, I've dealt with lawyers. That all they do is real estate, taxation, all of that. Dugan Employment law has nothing to do with real estate taxes and deeding and all of that to go through this. So we had somebody who was nowhere near an expert in this field spend tens of thousands of your dollars creating a pile of paper, which is probably only good for the fire heap, okay? And at the end of it, we, it cost us $52 million. It didn't just cost us if I added up all those numbers. It cost us $52 million, okay, that we should have been gotten getting over those 13 years. Don't you think $52 million should garner the A team? Don't you think it'd be worth it to find the experts in the nation to d do this for us? But truthfully, I don't think if we had followed the lead of Kittery, Maine, and those guys over there, we would have not even had to have lawyers that involved. We could, yeah, you'd have them draw up the agreement that they all did, but you don't really need, it wouldn't be that kind of intensiveness. And I've hired lawyers in my life. And lawyers generally, if they're working for you, they tell you how to solve the problem, okay? I don't know where Dugan was, but why didn't she know that these other towns were getting paid by, by, by GMH, later Belfort Beatty? Why didn't she find that out, okay? Not very good lawyers for, our, for, for you, okay? Okay. Now, the big issue here is BRAC. That's what Senator, Senator Heather Bond Summers, who, who's our senator from here to Hartford, and Representative Joe Courtney down in Washington. They're big into base realignment and closure. That's what BRAC stands for, okay? And we have to all worry about when BRAC comes around again, okay? And if we raise a roof over Balfour Beatty, we're going to lose BRAC. Well, 
There's plenty of documentation in these piles of stuff that Mark Oren has that says that we are not, and I read you something, we're not going to lose BRAC. None of these other five communities lost BRAC. You think the Navy is going to pull out of something that would cost billions of dollars, the, the sub-base, to reproduce. They're not going to. And I'm going to tell you, this is not the Navy anymore. This is a private entity now called Balfour Beatty, who's on the London Stock Exchange. They have, they're, they're private. The Navy wouldn't probably even get involved. And you heard a letter from the captain down at the base. They want to work with us. Okay? Never happened. Okay? And I, oh, and I guarantee you, if I do more research, I'll get five more communities, because there's many more out there, who all have agreements with Belfort Beatty. We are unique. And by the way, we're the biggest. I think we're one of the biggest here. So we're the most Im impacted by this, OK? There is no law that says the citizens of a town have to subsidize and voluntary, involuntarily a stock-owned company, no less one that is not even headquartered in the U.S. There are no danger signs at the border of Groton that say, beware, when you enter because you will be held accountable for contribute to this Bridges company's bottom line. That is what you are under, and you haven't known about this for years because our town manager kept it quiet. And I'm hoping, this is why there is a shine. This is why I have the red on today, to bring attention to it, because this is red. You know what red, the bull, bulls get aggravated by red. To, it's a warning sign. And this is a warning sign to you, all the reds you see here, okay? That we got we to gotta bring this to these people's attention when you go to the voting booth, that they got to be on top of this. Okay, we've got now... Dr. Grenier is going to be involved here. Um, we have two graphs. Okay, the first one is Belfort beating military costs per student, and I'm going to let Dr. Grenier go with this. Well, this is this is some information that we've been gathering for for the last several years, and you talked about uh, Congressman Courtney and. It was actually uh, a delegation of town councilors went, went down to uh, Washington. Uh, let me explain this chart. Uh, the, the blue part of the chart uh, shows uh, when uh, military dependents uh, have children who attend our schools, uh, we get uh, a, a federal aid. It, it's called impact aid. And so you see here um, for, the, for the children, it, it's, it's about for four thousand two hundred dollars per child, so that's the the blue on the on, on the bottom of the chart. The green in the middle part of the chart is, is the state funding that we get. Uh, the, the, actually, it's the funding that's in imperiled right now. That's the reduction, uh, significant multi million dollar reduction that we're right. facing. Uh, and and then the red at the top is uh, quite simply. After the state and after the federal aid is uh, is accounted for, uh, there are still a portion. Uh, you notice the the, uh, the top part of the the graph uh, stops at, at about fifteen point uh, uh, right. five thousand uh, dollars. So the that that graph the the, the red part uh, I I indicates that that is the that is the uh, amount of money that the Groton taxpayer uh, ha has to pick up. Uh, for, for right. the for the children who who live in Balfour Bay. Well, the, this is the military kids. This is the military. So even the kids. military yeah. kids. Right, right. And I, you know, we always we, we always uh, make it clear how how honored we are to serve the children uh, of those military veterans. Uh, but there are military children who who live all over the Groton community, right. uh, and of course. Uh, the military children who don't live in Balfour Beatty, right. uh, their, their parents uh, contribute, contribute right. to the tax rolls. Right. Uh, but these children uh, here, so it's a, in a, in a, in a quick breakdown, it, it's about 25% a, 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 uh, comes from the impact aid, about another 30% uh, uh, or so comes from uh, the education cost sharing grant from the state. Uh, but uh, in this case, in the, in the current year, it's it's about seven thousand dollars. So the the uh, the children uh, mil, mil, military dependent per plus, student 
about seven thousand right. dollars uh, right. more. That, right. That's right. Right. Well, I want to point out this graph because it's sometimes a little hard to understand these bar graphs. The whole height of the whole each bar is the total amount it costs us per student per year in Groton. Okay, and then each color represents how those costs get covered. And the red, as I told you, red <laughs> should be a warning sign to you. That is the part that Balfour Beatty doesn't pay, okay? And that you, the citizens, have to contribute per student. So this is for military kids. So the Navy doesn't contribute enough to cover all our costs, right? That, that's right. The, right. the blue portion of this chart is, is a federal impact aid, which is a, a very large uh, uh, grant that comes from the Department of Education, actually, and it, it is nationwide. And I, I, I know it's a it, it's it's a multi million dollar program. Right. Um, we we receive uh, this year. It, it's actually been been dwindling. And when we talk about the civilian children, that that may be part of the reason it's been dwindling. But uh, this year, Groton received three point two million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the total cost, uh, 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 of course. Uh, What's for, that relate to per student? Uh, about forty-two hundred dollars, four thousand two hundred dollars okay. per student. And it costs us in two thousand sixteen over fifteen thousand per student, right? That, that's right. Okay, so, that's right. so this, about about yeah. half of that is picked right. up by the Groton taxpayers. Right, right. So you could see we we we're getting hurt from all directions here. The Navy's not compensating. Right. Right. The state the state aid is at jeopardy right now completely. That's part of that twelve point five million dollars right. shortfall exactly. that we've talked about in the last show. And um, and I want to point out when you look at this graph, the top of these bars. If I drew a line across the top, it's going up. Okay, it's right. going up, and the amount of the red. As you go, especially in the last three years, is getting bigger. It's also going up. It's right. getting bigger. The area of it is getting bigger, and that means you're paying more every year for the for the Navy kids. Now, this is the Navy kids who live at Belfour Beatty. Remember, we get no tax dollars. All right. Now, Ember, I told you, it's not just Navy anymore. Okay, it's it's it's. Um, it's civilians are in there because they probably couldn't meet the to fill the place so they opened it up I don't know when that happened that would be very nice to know because that definitely is a point at which it got privatized. Uh, well I can tell you when it first began okay uh, the Balfour Beatty housing uh, was 100 percent military right uh, as the years have gone by uh, the the number of civilian children living in Balfour Beatty, and of course paying in, no taxes, uh, has has gone from uh, zero. Uh, it, it has steadily gone up o over the years. Right. Uh, so this year there is uh, 144 children okay. uh, who attend right. our schools. So remember, that's over 15,000 in 2016 times 100 and 100 and how many? Uh, 144, 144 children, children this year. 144 children, and we'll see the math in the next chart right, of right, that. Okay, right. let's go, Frank, to the next chart. This is a very similar chart, except at the <laughs> very bottom, you probably can't even see it, uh, the, way, the way impact aid, the way federal aid comes uh, for children uh, who, who live uh, in, on Balfour Beatty is that we get about $4,200 for a military dependent, uh, but we only get $185 <laughs> uh, for each uh, right. child. So, so that's, that's a loss of a little bit more than $4,000 per that's child. That's the blue, the yeah, 180 yeah, which you, some which dollars. you really can't see, you can't even very, see. very much. Uh, so if you, look at, if you look at the chart, of course, and, and as I said, it, it, it went from a, a, a low of zero students at one point, now uh, to in, in uh, FY16 uh, to 100, 144. So of course the, the, the green line, that's the state aid, that's remained pretty constant, but the red, uh, the dangerous part, uh, is getting bigger and bigger. And, and this year, uh, that red amounts to uh, $10,650. So, uh, for each uh, civilian child who attends, uh, who, who lives 
uh, in Balfour Beatty Housing uh, and uh, attends our school, we do get the state aid, or at least right. we, we did, but right. again, that's the money that's imperiled. Uh, but even if we get the full state aid, the, the Groton taxpayer still has to pick up six thousand uh, uh, eleven thousand six hundred and fifty. Right, right. That's, in, that's significant. And I envision they're becoming more and more civilians in there. If you watch, if you drive by, they have lots of advertising. I drive by there every day. They have lots of advertisement out, flags waving to attract tenants, okay, which is, is well, the, normal. I can tell you, the concern that I've, I've heard voiced many times is that uh, as, as EB continues to hire, right. more and more of those workers, uh, and those, those workers... Be, because they're civilian, uh, uh, of course, does not give us the the reimbursement rate that they would get for right. for, for right. military. You get children. virtually nothing from the federal government. That's right. Right. That's right. So right. as as we project forward, uh, we're we're afraid it's going to be a, a deeper uh, deficit that we'll face. Right. Well, it's like the pie chart for the grand list. It's the same situation. The pie chart isn't getting. You're actually the pie in your case is getting bigger because the cost to educate every student goes up every right. year. Right. Right. So we're getting less and less of that pie, and in the case of the civilians, zero right. from outside to pay for right. these kids' education. So, right. as in the uh, grand list, who's picking up the difference? You, the the town right. of Groton taxpayer. Okay. You. You are paying for it. Okay. So, and I do want to remind uh, you again, I mentioned the last show, there's also another business on this property. I believe it's owned by Solar City. You drive by, you see all the solar collectors on. They have three farms now. And you'll see, I have pictures, when we run through the candidates, you'll see picture, one picture of the solar farm. Those are all scenes, by the way, of Belfort Beatty, uh, and when it scrolls by the names. Um, so, well, thank you, Dr. Grenier, for your, your input on that, and I, I really appreciate it. And so how did we get here? Do you, any ideas how we got here? Well, I think, uh, well, certainly from the school's perspective, uh, we have worked with the federal government. We have lobbied uh, strongly every year uh, for increased amounts of federal aid education, federal impact aid. Uh, because the, as I as I always say, we are we are honored to have the children uh, sure. uh, of military uh, personnel. Uh, I came here as as military person myself mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, many years ago, and we we greatly we greatly value the, the, those children. Sure. And, and in fact, one of one of the schools that is nearly 100 percent military, uh, Charles Barnum Elementary mm -hmm. School, was. Uh, uh, selected as a blue ribbon school last year, so yeah, the children are thriving sure. and and so forth. Um, but we we know and we have pushed on the federal government that when and when there is a, a, a large military base uh, with significant uh, housing that is required of the military personnel, there's only there's only one uh, one town in the state of Connecticut. Uh, that 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 has yeah uh, us yeah uh, us and right. so we're all alone. We are we are uh, very much concerned about federal aid uh, to to support the children, right. and, and and of course this this question, especially with increasing numbers of of civilians, right. the the percentage of the cost of those children uh, will go up for the Groton taxpayer uh, right. should this uh, right. But I want to get straight to the to our watching public here to understand, because sometimes state government is, I mean, town government and state's hard to understand. Um, Dr. Grenier is not responsible for collecting taxes, right? That's correct. Okay. When a company moves in here and gets assessed or housing gets built, the school department has nothing to do with that. Right. Right? Correct. So that's other entities which are con under the... There, there's two equals in a town. There's a superintendent and the town manager, or some towns have a mayor system or a first selectman system, okay? And they're equals, okay? So, and they have separate budgets, all right? So 
Dr. Grenier has nothing to do with the part of collecting money from these entities right. as, as, private, as a private company, Solar City or Balfour Beatty now. He has nothing to do with that. That's not a, a Department of Education function. So he can only follow along. He can it may influence trying to get the federal government, to, you know, which I think he should do, to subsidize more. Yes. Uh, and, and, but he, he has no influence on when something becomes privatized, he has no influence. The schools have nothing to do with it. That comes under, in, in the day of this happening, under Mark Gofinger. Okay? So, thank you, Dr. Grenier. And I'm going to give my opinion of why this happened. Okay? Sheer laziness. Okay? It was just easier to do nothing. This happened in the go-go years. It was before 2008, before the big market crash. And it was just easier to do nothing. This is not an easy problem to solve. It's work. Other towns did it. And you got to sit down. You got to negotiate. And I'm going to say we had no good negotiators. We didn't have a town attorney that did anything for us, collected a lot of fees, tens of thousands of dollars, created four big three-ring notebooks, three-inch ring notebooks of, of junk. Um, Mark Ovinger was totally aware that this was going on. We have proof of that, okay? He, earns, he earned a big salary, 100 and f almost $150,000 a year when he retired. He's earning now $96,000. I want to add on to that. He's also getting, I pay $1,000 a month, for my, over $1,000 for my health care. Mark Ovinger is going to be taken care of by you, the citizens, for the rest of his life, okay? He doesn't have to worry about a thing, okay? You, due to... Your sacrifices, okay? He did a lousy job. He didn't have the long-term interests at, of your money at, at heart here. I've had many meetings with Mark Ofinger over the 13 years. I, talk, I brought up this subject, I, can't, I lost count, on more from the perspective, how are we going to attract other housing investors into Groton when they have to compete against that because they can't compete? So that was my view of it. Always kind of shrugged it off, never took it seriously. Okay, as I said, they're, I think the council to some, not that they're off the hook, but I think Mark Ofer kept them in the dark. Um, there were six councils, that's six different groups of people, some of them which got reelected, they were the same. There were repeated requests from Mick O'Byrne, a former mayor, to, who inquired about this. And I also wanted to say, and Dr. Grenier, I'm sure he kind of said it, this has nothing to do with Navy people. It has nothing against Navy people. This is not Navy people's fault. Nothing to do. This is much more a town uh, mismanagement problem, okay? The, their, uh, Balfour Beatty is paying in other communities. It's just that we didn't step, you know, in business, you learn. If nobody asks, don't say anything. Okay, Groton went right along with this. So if nobody said anything, they're going to keep going on the path and not pay anything if they don't ask. Apparently, these other towns asked. To the point of they sent the letter, so I believe it was uh, Kittery, they sent the letter and asked, how do you want us to pay you? Okay? We, unfortunately, weren't that savvy. Okay? This past council that's coming up for re-election, they know all about this problem. Okay, and I want you to think about that in the next election. Okay, we another Mark Ofinger function. We hired the wrong professionals. This is a very specialized area of law, uh, tax law, real estate law. It's highly specialized. Having somebody who's a employment lawyer is not the right person. Okay, and these other towns got solutions. I doubt because I talked to them that they had their town attorneys, they probably had them join, draw up that agreement that I read you parts of, but they did not do this big study. They said, we need to be compensated. You heard the, our captain now at the base, he said, we're willing to compensate. Did we do anything? No, I don't think we ever asked. You want to know the truth. That's am amazing to me. Okay. Um, get your pen and paper out. Um, I want you to get ready to start writing down names. I hope this show has got you like my shirt. 
kind of <laughs> like the, the hat. And I hope it's got you wanting to shake up gratin because it needs a lot of shaking up. Okay, we're going to have another show on November 1st. I'm going to talk about economic development. Uh, it's going to be at 7 o'clock. We're going to make that an open show um, where you can call. Please be nice to me. Um, please email me with any questions at shakeupgratin at gmail.com. I could use help with these shows if you would like to volunteer in any way. And please vote November 7th. Get registered. See you again on November 1st. Thank you.